Hello everyone, I'm Christine Niles. Today's Wednesday, November 19th, 2014. A brief warning that one of our stories today is of a graphic sexual nature. Your discretion is strongly advised. Here are your latest headlines from churchmilitant.tv news. Cardinal Raymond Burke is asking Pope Francis to take hot button issues off the table at next year's synod. Addressing a group in Ireland over the weekend, Burke said topics like cohabitation, gay marriage, and communion for the divorced and remarried distracted from church teaching. Instead, he encouraged the faithful to write the Pope, asking that next year's synod focus on promoting true marriage. Burke said he refuses to use the phrase traditional marriage. In his words, quote, is there any other kind of marriage? I fear that by using that terminology that we give the impression that we think there are other kinds of marriage. Well, we don't. The head of ISIS is apparently still alive and calling for, quote, jihad everywhere, close quote, against Christians, Jews, and atheists. Following reports he died in a bombing, ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi has apparently released the message to assure Muslims he and his mission are still strong. He proclaims, O Muslims, rest assured that the status of your caliphate is good. Its advance will not be stopped. And God willing, it will spread throughout the world, even if the disbelievers oppose it. Just last week, ISIS targeted the Vatican in its manifesto, threatening, quote, we will conquer your Rome, break your crosses, and enslave your women. Explicit sex acts, drug use, and internet pornography all on display at an Oregon sexual education conference. A report released yesterday from Portland news station KOIN6 details the horrifying content on full display at the Oregon Adolescent Sexuality Conference. Here's an excerpt from their report. We remind you again, this report contains graphic sexual content. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. There were also handouts like this one, encouraging cyber and phone sex. They went on to suggest things like bathe together, shave each other, wear each other's underwear, role play, lap dance, or strip tease, buy an XXL pair of pajama bottoms and sleep in them together. All suggestions on how kids can engage in intimate activities without going all the way. I checked and inside this handout reads, meth is widely used for a million reasons. To have lots of sex with lots of partners for long periods. And when we spoke to the director of the conference last spring, he never gave us any indication of the graphic nature of the conference. So after I was given the audio and pamphlets, I recorded requested an interview and asked him about it. During this teledildonics uh, session, the speaker spoke about uh, masturbating via Skype. Is there a concern that that could possibly you, be recorded? Is this and interview used? gonna go all down this line the whole time, Carla? Because if it is, I'm walking out. And I'm serious about this. <laughs> I am. These are legitimate questions. No, they aren't legitimate questions. Brad Victor is partially paid with state funds to put on the Oregon Adolescent Sexuality Conference in Seaside. I learned Brad Victor has two state agencies supporting him. The Oregon Health Authority helped sponsor the conference. I checked, they spent more than $1,000 of your tax money for the 2013 and 2014 conferences. I also found the Oregon Department of Education is on the steering committee. They paid him more than $800, plus he gets more than $4,000 from the federal government. But he's mostly paid by WISE, or working to institutionalize sex education. It's a private grant from a private foundation. And the material that is passed out at this conference is dedicated to preventing teen pregnancy, prevention of STDs, and also developing healthy relationships. Well, it does talk about in some of the pamphlets encouraging things like looking up porn, having hidden hickeys, taking baths together, uh, cyber sex, wearing each other's underwear, role play, strip teases, do you think that prevents teen sex? I'm not going to address that question. That question's inappropriate. How is that inappropriate if it's a pamphlet that you, you hand that. out at I'm your conference? I'm not going to address that question. While he refuses to give an answer, this student tells me what she saw go on in the name of healthy sexuality was shocking. I felt really just 
horrified and unsettled by it all. There was a session where students were taught how to put a condom on, but what got to her was the workshop where the speaker brought students to a porn website and taught them to program the virtual women. To see the full report, please see our resource page. In a related story, as part of the sex education program, Chicago Public Schools will now be teaching fifth graders, quote, how to increase sexual pleasure. The head of the Benedictine Order in Austria is calling for the ordination of women. At last Saturday's conference, titled Women in the Church, Equal Dignity, Equal Rights, the abbot appealed to Pope Francis to allow it. The conference was made up of dissident church groups, as well as feminist theologians and sociologists. The Bishop of the Diocese of St. Polten is not responding to the abbot's comments, nor has he condemned the heretical conference. In response to climbing infanticide rates in South Korea, one local pastor is saving hundreds of lives. Pastor Lee Jong Rak of Seoul, South Korea, has created a drop box for unwanted children. Women who don't want their babies for whatever reason are encouraged to drop off the child in a safe box attached to his home. So far, hundreds of children have been saved. A movie's been made about the pastor called The Drop Box and will be airing in March of 2015. I'm Christine Niles. Those are your headlines from churchmilitant.tv. Please watch The Vortex today, where Michael examines how true evil operates. Thanks for tuning in. Please share churchmilitant.tv news with your friends. See us on Facebook and Twitter, and may God bless you.